well. What, too soon? It looks like they started this chase where the sun is at its biggest and reddest, and so that the filmmaker can hammer that land of the rising sun thing pretty hard. There's no such thing as a Bruce Almighty sun, so maybe we just start calling this a Teenage Mutant Ninja Sun. The opening of the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time, opens with the shot of someone on a horse being pursued by four warriors across what appears to be a hilly plain of some sort. They're obviously going over grass, but when the movie cuts to a profile shot of a single rider, he's on a beach and probably rides past Hans Gruber, who's earning 20%. Get up, your weapon! This movie had a reported budget of over 20 million dollars, but it looks like a mid-season episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Did 10 million of the budget go to Elias Coteus at the peak of the Teen Choice Awards phase of his career? Take him prisoner! Oh, you will have to kill me first! Wow, sounds like the ADR for this movie was recorded outside during rush hour in the median of the 405. Also, I was gonna say something super sarcastic about how exciting the sword fight is, but man, sometimes a scene is staged, shot, and edited so badly that it zaps the sarcasm right out of you. This is sword touching, not sword fighting. Okay guys, I want you to dolly forward into the mannequins and I need a good shot of this mannequin's ass. The kids love mannequin butt shots, guys. Today's special was full of that sh Nice, the guy that directed Rocket Man. I bet this is a similarly nuanced take on the legendary career of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. What, what? The other Rocket Man? The one where Harlan Williams farts all over space? Well, then at least I can consider myself warned. You know, this movie does have some good martial arts work, especially considering those poor bastards were wearing latex turtle suits for a lot of this sh I guess I should take a sin off, right? Holy Oh, I forgot April Fool's Day was yesterday. I mean, the weird thing about montages like this is when they put constants into the edit, which makes everything we see the turtles doing discontinuous. When we see Splinter watching them while a song in the background plays uninterrupted, it makes all the new actions we see the turtles doing completely disjointed. Does it matter? It does not, but I feel the need to point it out anyway. Have patience, my son. The animatronic effects in this movie make the rock of fire explosion look like inception. Day what? after day, practicing, Killing ourselves for what? I don't know, Raphael. It sounds like something you're upset about because the movie needs to establish a thread that you're unhappy in the first act so that it'll rear its ugly head sometime later in the film. That's how out of nowhere this rant is. Does that answer your question? Write you some stuff. Did April just leave the manhole cover open? Or is it always open? That's sunlight, right? Or did she just come from a place above this subway that is bathed in white light? Here are the keys awesome. to my apartment. What's more believable, that April would entrust the turtles to watch her apartment while she's on vacation, or that she doesn't have anybody else in New York who could do it for her? Actually, I don't really know what it is. I'm pretty sure we're at least 25% into this movie. So why are the goddamn credits still rolling? Are they listing all the people that worked on this film individually? A super androdyne radio with triode tubes. Boss! No! It is you who have disgraced me, father, with your unjust war. You know what this franchise about four metropolitan reptilian mutants needed? Historical family drama. Brilliant! Walker. Texas Ranger? Yeah, that'll show them what happens when you try to properly light a scene. I nearly laughed out loud at the concept of the turtles being on this ancient scroll, but then I thought, this is a world with phantasmagoric ooze, talking rats, and a successful vanilla ice. Is this really that much of a stretch? <laughs> Got a question. Why does April get a complete wardrobe change, but gets to keep her Walkman and headphones? And this guy, who's been sent to the present, he gets to keep a sword. Wake up, hmm? weird looking James Dean dude. <laughs> you know what immediately sucks about this movie? It has to insert reaction shots to f Everything. It's worse than the Irishman. Yes. Demons. Huh? Hey! He speaks English. Thanks, Leonardo. How did you get in April's pants? Well, according to Casey Jones, it took a little French poetry, a bottle of Chablis, a fireplace, and some early John Legend music. Some sort of a witch. Yeah. Why the sh is Walker being so polite here? He just beat the f out of the boss man's guards a few minutes ago and was openly threatening him out in the courtyard. Why is he interested in this at all? Isn't he just in this for the war profiteering? We unfortunately can't play Barrio Boy's Conga, but I'm sorry to say that a Walkman without a battery couldn't play that song either. But play the song it does, until these Japanese warriors officially murder it. And no, that's not a spare battery, because this is what the Walkman looked like when it was alive. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I am a witch. Man, April sure has adapted to this situation quickly, eh? She's just traveled back 390 years and halfway around the world, but is still full of this much piss and vinegar? If I told you this was William Shatner and Gina Davis in this shot, you'd definitely believe me, right? I bet the director was hoping he could fool you, at least for a second. If, if I subtract the cosine from the inverted integer... Wow, Donatello's going to figure out time travel in roughly the speed that Tony Stark does in Endgame. I'm beginning to think figuring out time travel is super easy, and today's scientists are either f***ing lazy or worse, they're all super ethical people. It will only work if 
the magic travelers each have the same weight. So the plan to send all four Ninja Turtles will rely on there being four equal sized people from the past who are also around the scepter at the time they go back? Sure, sounds easy enough. Also, f off. Even though Kenshin is a thin guy, ain't no fing way he weighs the same as Tiny April. Aw oh, man, they dragged Elias Coteus back to the third Turtles film after completely ignoring him in the second one, didn't they? Leo, how's it going? Hey, Casey! <laughs> Welcome back! Jesus, how did I forget that Casey Jones was such a goddamn mimbo? He looks and acts like Dan Cortez's character from Seinfeld after the head injury caused by the fall off the cliff. Why is this cage? Is it solely used for torture? If so, why is there so much hay at the bottom? Hell, it looks practically cozy in there. This is a Rolex. It's a gold Rolex. You want it? Geez, she gotta keep a Rolex too? What was the point of the clothing switch? Well, well, get in there, boy. What have we got here? Well, 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 what have we got here, cliche? The scepter will be in the temple, which means you will be replaced by four priests. How the f*** do you know that? Even if Kenshin knows what the protocol would be with the scepter, he can't possibly know that it's actually there or if four turtle-sized priests will be around it. We have no time for this scientific debate. Well, unless the past is moving forward concurrently with the present, we will have all the time in the world, actually. Could wait 80 years and still go back to 1603 and still save April. But I get it. You're Master Splinter. You're the guy that gets them focused. You're right, the movie shouldn't be wasting its time on bullshit. Come on, guys, let's go. It's time. Okay, that's it. I'm at the point that I'm mother sick and tired of any time traveling in any movie that's not about time. F it. F it. Find another way to write a goddamn story, you f***ing Hang on, why are the turtles going back to get April instead of Kenshin just using the next cycle of the scepter to go back himself? It's like they didn't even consider this as an option. So in this battle, why did the four honor guards bring the scepter with them? It still should have been at the castle, right? What were they gonna do with the scepter out here? I think I swallowed a frog! I hope it wasn't an ancestor. Casual chaos theory reference aside, what's up with this line? They're not teenage mutant ninja amphibians, right? We're here five minutes and already we lost one brother, the magic scepter, our dignity, and no April! So I guess all hope is lost, huh, Raphael? What a f***ing whiner they turn this guy into. I know this is sort of his thing, but when he does it in this movie in particular, it feels like his complaints are just inserted so that you remember he's the red one. Who's first in line? Come on. Right there. This sh makes no sense. Casey, Splinter, and Kenshin were all watching when the four guards arrived. So what happened? Did all three of them leave while these four guys sat here in their underwear? Did Splinter peace out without telling Casey not to f*** with these guys? How have they not seen Kenshin yet? Have they been standing in the same spot this whole time? What the f*** is this sh Also, if this had turned into an actual fight, I would have said movie has time for this. But why doesn't the movie have any of this? It's been nearly 30 minutes and nobody's fought once. It's a goddamn ninja movie, goddammit! Today my honor guard carried my own secret weapon. A scepter with powers I know nothing about, but chose to have my honor guard carry in a battle for some reason, probably the plot of a screenplay. Did you know that in some countries dung is used as a fuel source? And sometimes it's even used on film to keep kids quiet for 90 minutes while their parents contemplate the choices they've made in their lives. Suzuki Kawasaki! <laughs> Reducing cultures to easily recognizable brand names is hilarious. I'd be loose! I guess I'll let this guy out because he's Caucasian and has a bad boy look to him, but mother the rest of these prisoners down here. Hey, come and get me! Come on! I know the Turtles movies are supposed to be lighthearted fun, but you gotta admit, turning 17th century Japanese warriors into mindless buffoons is kinda f***ed up. Come on, boys, into the dark, cramped dungeon where it'll be impossible to see the first actual battle in this movie. Oh, <laughs> these guys are really pushing! Did you hear that? That's the sound of a clearly not metal grape being pulled out of a not stone floor. I don't normally point this kind of thing out, but when heroes escape impossible situations, it makes me mad. Also, you probably shouldn't have water falling down your super happy fun slide if you want to avoid the continuity errors as you fill each turtle falling through the hole. Whoa, she just touched his teenage mutant ninja cloaca. That's sinful in at least three different ways. Help, I'm a turtle and I can't get up. It's insane when a joke like this was old even in 1993. Oh, that hurts. Holy did Mikey sleep through the whole sequence of them rescuing April? This poor bastard has a severe concussion, man. He should be writhing around and puking like that poor lady from Parasite. I'm on vacation. Right. Oh. We absolutely swing turtle boners. It's hammer time. Oh. I'm just gonna add 400 sins for all the stupid references. Some make no sense. Some are already outdated before the movie comes out. Some are so far into the past that the target audience doesn't even know what they are. And worst of all, they are delivered at an unrelenting pace to the point that this movie can give a screenwriting credit to the existence of pop culture. It's easy for your turtle heroes to look awesome when their opponents look so bad that they don't even look like they've even heard of battle before. One tension! Fire over their heads! And burn this place to the ground! Sounds like something you'd tell them before getting here.
here, but you do you, D-rated villain. Also, this raid scene is just awful. Yeah, there are tons of close-ups and quick edits and all the normal bullshit. But it's hard to see the humans we're supposed to care about in this scene. And we just learned about this village a minute ago. And we only got a brief mention of what they're fighting for, so this whole scene has no heart or soul. The Holy shit, this TMNT movie takes a hard and dark turn into Braveheart territory halfway through. If Walker declares Prima Nocta with Michelangelo, I'm gonna have to fast forward to the part where Leo gets disemboweled and yells, Freedom! Really loud. See, when I said westerns were dead, what I meant was, uh, well, they're not dead, because I forgot about Clint. I don't know why Walker doesn't just go ahead and kill Michelangelo right now. But I guess he finds this discussion about the death of Westerns and Clint Eastwood more amusing than I do. And in my mind, that's what makes him the villain of this movie. I'll save you, Captain. <laughs> Hi there. If they're so good at sneaking up on people and beating ass, why didn't they do it on both of the assholes that have guns pointed at Mikey? Hold it right there, Zoro dude! So the people the movie is saying are the good guys surround Walker here, but somehow leave a huge gap for him to run towards the exit? Wasn't that Mitsu chick in charge of these guys? Didn't we hear she was supposed to be a badass? What has she been teaching this crew? This looks pretty f***ing dangerous, but we see in a few seconds that the window is like maybe five feet off the ground. This kid couldn't jump. Michelangelo puts like a cloak or shirt or cape or some f over his head and then runs into the house engulfed in flames. Kids, do not be like Michelangelo. Ironically, if this were a Goofus and Gallant comic, Goofus would be the one trying to play the hero, while Gallant would be the one with his arms crossed watching the building and that kid go up in flames. I think he's gonna be okay. I know this because he's lying motionless in a sack right now. Leonardo de Fibrillo. I'm happy the kid lived, but these people have never seen CPR before. They're going to treat this kid like Highlander's Village did after they realized he was immortal. I have no proof of this, but I have to think Elias Coteus had a really British accent, and they nixed almost all of his lines as this character. You're not seriously suggesting that Donatello is gonna make an incredibly arcane time travel machine. God damn it, this movie's such a waste of time. They're not even gonna try to look for the scepter as their first plan. It couldn't have gone far. There are only like five set pieces in this entire movie. We're not even in the playoffs yet. So Casey follows the University of Arizona hockey team. Refers to them as we in New York? Pizza. Got that dude? Pizza. Not really. I mean, is the underside of this pizza hollow? Ah, oh, well, probably still better than Papa John's. Hey, the village looks pretty f***ing good for being attacked and largely burned just about an hour ago. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kidnapping. You guys are kids. You should be out, um, you, you should be out having fun. Fun is for children. Stephen Miller. By the way, I know the movie explains that the English came to trade with the Japanese in the 16th century, and that's how they know English and shit, but I am not buying people in rural areas knowing English this well. I honestly don't think 45% of this movie was scripted. They just filmed the cast and crew doing shit to keep them from literally dying of boredom. Why do the turtles need knee and elbow pads? Besides their bandanas, it's pretty much their only form of clothing. And I have to ask, is it necessary? Did the ooze make everything superpowered in their bodies except for the hinge joints? I was asking the gods to protect someone. Kenshin? He's like your beau, huh? Not being French and referring to boyfriends as beaux. So, uh, what's your sign? Dude, you just acknowledged she had a boyfriend. What the f*** is this? Okay, guys. Let's play a little hockey. Sure, what the hell? We've tried everything else in this movie that doesn't involve actual combat. Walker, my dungeon is very crowded. Yeah, because, you see, corporations run the prison system, and they have all these lobbyists that make sure the government passes laws so that people who conduct petty crimes go to jail and stay there and the prisons get overcrowded. So then they have to build more prisons. And don't even get me started on the racial element of such a system. Oh, oh, you were making a point about not taking prisoners in this battle. What do you hear, Sensei? Danger. I know Splinter is wise and shit, but does he have the force? How is he feeling danger from nearly 400 years in the past? Now forget about Mitsu and give me the scepter before- They're going to fight over this scepter and it's going to fall down into this paper mache well. It'll be destroyed and everybody will have wasted their time. There is no reason for them to fight over the scepter other than the script demands it. What's weird is after this happens, sure, they're upset, but the kind of upset you'd be if you lost a quarter on the street and not the chance to go back to your own time. Hey, what's the matter, little man? What's up with those tears? What's going on here? I mean, it's not like you died earlier today or anything, right? I mean, it's not like you lost your homestead and your grandfather's displaced, right? Hey, it's not like your entire village is going to be executed by foreign assassins in the mo- God damn it! Movie proves that whenever somebody goes the extra mile to create a replacement for something and it gets destroyed, the original will be found in record time before the end of the third act. There's no reason to pass the scepter around like it's the goddamn Stanley Cup. Stop handling it, you ball sacks. As long as we didn't have the scepter, we had no choice but to stay and fight. Right? You mean, we were set up? What a long way to go to manufacture conflict, man. No one in the village knew about the scepter or the turtles when they took it, and no one protested at all when they were making the new one that broke just a few minutes ago. Let off! 
I don't have it. Oh, well, if you say so, sure. I mean, there was a bond, right? Why don't you go down to the harbor and bring back the men and their guns? Guns? The director said, we don't have the budget for apples on this set, but we do have a surplus of plums, so take a big bite out of that tiny mother It'll make you look like an even bigger asshole. Hey, you guys, check it out. You better come take a look at this cliche. But it was only a legend. Dudes, we're legends. Okay, wait, are they legends or is some other entirely different group of turtles legends? Hey, you were expecting maybe uh, the Adams family? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> it is. Mikey, Mikey watch out! Ah! Yep, that's exactly what a sword sounds like when it hits a turtle shell. Hey, look, I don't know what it sounds like, and you don't know what it sounds like. So the fact that it sounds like a plastic sword hitting a plastic shell could be 100% accurate. You don't know. I mean, how do these guys get jobs as guards? I know the turtles are supposed to be awesome, but it doesn't look like any of these guys have ever even held a sword before. You're free, guys, let's go! If they'd already let the prisoners out of their shackles, why didn't they escape through the garbage chute? They seriously waited all this time on the off chance that they'd be let out the front door? Also, these assholes come out with pitchforks and weaponry, and I have to wonder, why are there so many of those items in the dungeon? There's just one dude that guards it. And here's the classic bull. We're supposed to believe the king is suddenly a great fighter that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a ninja turtle, as if he's a hundred times better better than any of his worthless soldiers. <laughs> this bell was perfectly human shaped. What are the odds? My God. Stay cool. Who's your tail? We're naked. Due to the crappy animatronics of the mouth movements, I can't tell who would be excellent at Cinema Sins, but I guess one of these buttholes would be. Hey, Tinkerbell. Why don't you shoot us? Uh, Leo, wait. Uh, uh, Sorry, are you addressing me? Uh, what the f do you care? Shoot us yourself. Unless you're too scared. Yeah, this works. Try this on for size. Oh, uh, this could hurt. Or maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, you could move slightly to the left or the right of the extremely static cannon. <laughs> oh, look, Don King. <laughs> I believe is what you've been searching for. Uh, go fetch. Stop trying to make fetch a thing, Walker. Turtles, together, strong. Was this catapult just pointed in the exact place it needed to be pointing to make this shot? I, I mean, I guess it's not the worst falling in my death scene, since Robocop exists, but it sure is a far cry from Hans Gruber. Kenshin, you cannot go without the others. It would be cowardly. Oh. Also, seriously, Splinter is more marginalized in this movie than Captain Marvel in Endgame. This establishing shot of the bar is hilarious because of all the beers being advertised on it getting blurred out. And of course, the blurring job is spectacular. I want to stay here with you. You will always be here with me. But also you won't because you'll be gone and when Kenshin returns, he's going to be laying the pipe. And I'll probably forget about you after that, but you're cool though. Also, this is the let's just be friends of 17th century Japan. I will never forget you, Raphael-san. Sure, Raph rapped with Yoshi for a while and flew a kite, but Yoshi does remember that Mikey saved him from a burning house and Leo raised him from the dead, right? Movie seems to refuse to end by allowing this oh no Michelangelo didn't come back with the rest of them nonsense that we know is going to get resolved in mere seconds. And there was peace in Japan and no wars ever again and nothing changed due to this time travel tomfoolery and these two were allowed to make out a bunch. The end. Hockey. And that's how hockey was invented in Japan and they became so dominant internationally. The 1980 miracle on ice never happened. Japan beat the USA 17 to 2 that day. Well, at least the movie mercifully decided to do this dance during the credits, rather than just before to inflate the runtime. It's still a sin, but maybe I'll take half off. Also, TMNT3 says that Michelangelo's name is spelled with an extra A in it, and while we usually go with the spelling in the credits, the movie is wrong. We went by the credits on Mortal Kombat many years ago, and we spelled Raiden with a Y in it, and some of you guys nearly rioted, and you were right, movie was wrong. We definitely weren't, and never have been. So, there's another sin, movie. I'll melt you into a steaming puddle of puke. Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. What are we doing this for? Day what? after day. I spent all these years trying to be the good guy. You know, the man in a white hat. For what? Kind of a weird antique or something. I think it was an Asian gang or something. Oh. Hey, what's that, April? <laughs> Some kind of weird Japanese antique. Some sort of rave thing. Uh, 
She's a man! That's not your mother, it's a man, baby! I seem to think the woman's some kind of witch. We have found the witch! May we burn her? Hello? Can I get some help? Snack-related mishap! Excuse me, Niles. Would you have any grey poupon? You're as ready as ever gonna be. That wasn't part of the deal, Walker. That wasn't part of our deal, Blackheart! That wasn't part!